We're glad to know you're still there and watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We did say that we're going to bring you uh, something on the future of the Nigerian theater and the power of telling our own stories. A lot of times we see America in the light that they want us to see it because of the kind of movies that we watch. We do not know about the crime rate, the poverty, and everything that goes on in America. We only know what Nollywood or Hollywood rather shows us. But what does our own theater, what do our own movies talk about? Do we tell our stories through that? So we have an investment banker with us today who is also the CEO of Duke of Sumolu uh, Productions, in the person of Mr. Edgar Joseph. Uh, welcome to the program. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me. When um, uh, movies or home videos came up, a lot of people thought that theater will die. And you, as an investment banker, delve into it. Um, what is it looking like? Let's begin from that. Oh, okay. It's, 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 it's very exciting. Do you understand? So, you know, when I hear people make that statement, I just, mean, I just laugh because there's um, not what we investment bank we call a Chinese wall, but not as strong as the Chinese wall, but the markets are, are kind of different. The market between movies and theater is kind of different. Do you understand? So you can also even further, further um, um, delineate it even by age, demographies, and then income status and things like that. So for example, uh, the kinds of people who watch football and the kinds of people who follow polo. Do you understand? That's how it is too. So those who watch movies, you know, are a little bit different from those who come to theater. Even though I begin to see a slight, um, a slight um, mix of of both uh, markets. But this, these are very interesting times for theater. Very interesting times for theater. But it seemed like there was a time that it seemed uh, very low, and there's a revival now. Don't you think so? Yes, yeah, um, I, I also don't want to agree with that um, notion that it was, it was the time was very low. I hear that a lot, do you get? But you see, um, the fact that there was no real publicity with the way with the way it is going now, you know, didn't mean that very strong theatre adherents are not doing their jobs. It didn't mean that people are not going to see plays. People like um, Chuck Mike, I don't know if he's alive, was doing shows on the regular. You know, places like Museum Kitchen were doing shows on regular, National Theatre were doing shows in so, so, so places, do you understand? And then all over the country, you know, so um, I won't say it was low. It was, it was low at the same time where a lot of things were low in this country during the military era, mm. you know. Okay, so now get, get us, let us have an insight into what you feel uh, the power, uh, what the feel theatre can do in telling our stories because we we can only be seen the way we tell people about who we are. Yeah. So how much power does theatre have to put us out there in the light that we want people to see us? Well, theatre is very powerful too, if, if not more powerful than movies. The only, the only advantage that movie has over theatre, in my own estimation, I could be wrong, is reach. Do you understand? But power is, uh, theater is much more powerful because of the intimacy you get with the audience. So we're just coming from a kitchen now where we did the play with Faji. Do you understand? And I kid you not, that house sat a thousand people. Seven hundred people were crying. Seven hundred people were in tears. Seven hundred, it was just a mass hysteria of tears because of the intimacy, the immediacy, the power of that engagement, do you understand? But you know when you're watching a movie on screen, so yeah, there's a little bit of um, um, detachment. I guess you know. So 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 theater is a very powerful um tool for telling our stories. Very powerful tool. I should know because we've done this for seven years and I'm and I was seeing the, the, the reactions from, from, from the people. Might not be as much as as would expect from, from movies, but it's more much more how I put it now, intimate. Okay, well, you're talking about intimate. It makes me remember some of the plays that you have done. Yeah. Uh, that some are very controversial, some are very thought provoking, yes. and so much more. I, I remember you did something like Threesome. Yeah. You did something like Anonymous Nipples. Yeah. You, then you did uh, her, her Husband Has Gone Mad. Our Duke Has Gone Mad. Uh, the Duke Has Gone Mad yes. and all that. Yes. Okay, so, but what interests me mostly is um, why you chose to. Um, select some figures in Nigeria to tell their story. What do you intend to achieve? Okay, so I'm a, I'm a very passionate Nigerian. 
You know, I, I'm a very, very partial Nigerian. I believe in the sanctity of this country, you know, both geographically or otherwise. You know, so I want to use this platform to push that story of unity. You know, so in doing that, you know, I have to push stories of leaders in our recent past who, who in their activities, you get know, pushed for that unity. Do you understand? So a lot of people may not agree with me, but with some of the people I've, I've decided to, to, to showcase, you know, but in my own estimation, you know, I think those people had laid the building blocks for where we are today. See, Nigeria is a very strong country. Most countries cannot go through where we are going through and still remain country. Do you get it? So the foundations of this country, that's why I don't agree with you, who said Nigeria is a, a geographical expression. No. Do you get it? Nigeria has very strong foundations. That's why what everything is going on today, we are still a country. Are you getting me now? Everything is going on today, we are still a country. Go and try these things in another place and see what will happen. It will just back and and talk to, to what happened in Rwanda and even reach what's happening here. Are you getting me now? You know? So, 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 so we need to keep telling these stories, do you get? So that, so that upcoming, I'm not telling stories for my generation, no. I'm telling stories for the younger people, do you understand? So they can see that we had leaders. We don't have leaders anymore. What we have now is just uh, pirates. We had leaders, people who, 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 who gave their lives. People who took decisions that affected millions without personal gain. We had those people. Just 20, 30 years down the line, we're not talking about 100 Abraham Lincoln type people. 20, 30 years, people like Jack Hundy. You get you know, So today, what, 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 what kind of leaders are we throwing out, out, out there? It's, and theatre, art, must continue to be a weapon to fight social injustice. Do you think Nollywood is using that weapon? weapon I, I don't know about that. I can't talk about them. I, I, don't, I don't watch their movies. I can't talk about them. But the little I've seen is... It's very difficult for Nollywood to do that because it's, it's a profit-driven enterprise. And then what drives them is market. What does market want? So what, what, what is the fuel of Nollywood youths? What drives youths? Sex, fashion. Are you getting me now? soft stories, gossip. So nobody has to throw that line. And that's why I've shot a documentary now on Nigerian theater, Nigerian theater, and this is it to date. Nobody's carrying it. All these live streaming, they say they don't do documentary. It's not their fault, because there's no market. Are you getting me now? So I don't rely on market to do my transactions, to do my productions. I get my funding. So I can, I can tell the market to shift okay let's take let's let's have some of the names that you have done in your plays mm -hmm. um, and the stories that you wanted people to the lessons you wanted people to learn from each of the stories that you got i, I remember that you have a war yeah you did something on our yeah. and i know that you're doing something on fajui now yeah. let's keep that for later but a list of people that you have worked mm. on and why you did that. So for Awu, I, I wanted to bring out the power of a woman. You know, I, I think the average Nigerian woman is not serious. It's not serious. They will kill me, but it's <laughs> 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 the truth, you know. So, so do we have those kind of women leaders in the country today? Do you know that Awu's wife was the first person to ever hold a broom in a political campaign? That AP is going up and down like this. Do you know why? Because she was sweeping in her shop when they called her that Zeke is around. So she, she didn't know where she ran with the broom to go for that meeting. Mm. Do you also know that I was the first woman to campaign, to contest for election, to be pre Prime Minister or President of the country? Do you also know that I was wife was the one the government went to go and meet to say, tell your husband to beg and we'll release him. And she told her to get out. Mm. So we told that story from the worst angle. Mm. So a lot of people came for the play, thinking they would see how they saw each other. And then the play. So that was a wake up call to women. There's a scene in that play where she was on the floor when they told her that her son had just died. Her first son, on his way to Lagos to defend his father, died. So you can imagine a woman, her husband's in prison, son died. She was on the floor. And then the one other man stood and sang, started singing. He said, Dide, you know, her name is Dide Olu. Dide, you know, stand. Stand, stand. And then she stood up. That's what I said, made that story. Mm. Are you seeing now? Yeah. Which other one again? Oh, well, you did something on Aremu. Yeah. Something on the So Aremu's own, very simple. 
Do you get? I don't know the spirituality of it all. Do you get? There's something they call manifest destiny in leadership. There are people that are born to be leaders. What we have today are charlatans in power. That's why they cannot rise up. There's something in it about leadership that is very spiritual. Mm. So what we have today now, 90% of the Nigerian leaders today are those who have woke up in the morning and say, I want to be a leader for pecuniary reasons. That's why you can see that decision taking, you can see the kind of policies that are throwing. Mm. Obasanjo was spiritually made, it's, it's a spiritual leader. There's a spirituality about A lot of people will not agree with you anyway. No, 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 no. See, that's the beautiful thing about me. Dig it. The beautiful thing about me. I'm, I'm eccentric. I'm different. I don't give it that about what people think about me. Dig it, brother. I know what I know. Dig it. When somebody was born right from the womb, he has been fighting conquest from the womb. His mother kept dreaming that they want to eat him. And all of his life, three women, three women, all of his life, were playing a role. He sees those women till tomorrow morning. Are you getting me now? And then he escapes death at every little point in time. At just at the point when he's about to die, he will escape. Are you seeing now? And then he had a dream. When he was in a bachelor's cell, he had a dream. His mother came to him in the dream. And his mother said, they will die before you. And the next morning he woke up, he said, a bachelor's died. <laughs> and you see now, so the spirituality, so if all that play, if all that play, you will see too many stories of Obasanjo's political movements, or the, the spirituality of it all. We brought out those three women. Do you get it? We brought out the confusion between his parents, Christian religion and traditional religion. His name is Matthew. His name is Aaron. There's a scene where he was facing death, a bachelor's death, and the mother came and said, the mother rose from the grave and said, it's time for us to do what we need to do. And I could have no, but you gave me Matthew. He said, leave that off for now. Are you, are you getting me now? So there's spirituality of it all. So if you look at all these leaders that we have showcased, you see spirituality of it all. How will you see the majority of it all? Just as Zeke, you see the majority of it all. Do you get me now? So these are people, and that's why, they, that's why they're able to achieve money, immortality. Do you get? So I, I sat down in the kitty last week and I was asking myself, what did I will do that Tinubu is not doing today? What did I will do? I was a politician, Tinubu is a politician. I was partisan, Tinubu is partisan. I mean, I will build schools. Tinubu is building schools. But will Tinubu achieve that level of immortality? Okay, so um, we have just like two minutes now. Let me just ask you this. You're, you're exporting Fajri and all that to, to the UK? No, I will. I will. It's Awo that is going to the UK. Yeah. Okay, so what is your target audience there? The people who are not Nigerian or the Nigerian community? <laughs> You want me to be selfish about this conversation? <laughs> so, so when we're going to UK, you know, we're going to UK initially because of pressure. There's a lot of Nigerian diaspora saying, "Oh, you need to bring these things over. You need to bring these things over. You need to bring these things over." You know, we are missing. You're like putting Abuja. We need to bring this to Abuja. So we got to Abuja, full house, everything. So you need to bring this over. We are missing. So that, that was our initial consideration. Do you get? But in the last two, three, four months, let's see what dollar naira is doing. Do you get? So my, my thinking now is that we need to start any dollars, we need to start any forex as a nation. Mm -hmm. We can't just be, you know, choppy, choppy, choppy. We need to start bringing it in. Do you get? And so my thinking is that there are two types of industries that can do this. Do you get? Those that can do it in the short term, those that can do it in the mid to long term. So short term industries are people like us who are in the media and entertainment. We can take a show there, earn dollars and bring it back home. Do you get me now? While the man who is in our Greek will take him six, seven, eight, nine, ten months to get his tomatoes ready. While the man who is buying, doing cars will take him wherever, wherever he gets him now with all of the challenges that comes with all of that. So I can never cost more money. I always say 100,000 pounds. You get budget. You get, so if you convert that now, you know what that is. You get, I was going to give us 200 people on stage. 
any good money. I was going to most likely sell about 100,000 pounds in tickets. And you get me now. So if you're lucky, that comes back into the system. You get me now. So can imagine if you now had... So, I didn't, so what we're seeing here now is that we're having music being exported. But government has not really found out how to put structure around it to gain from that, that, that inflow, either due to taxation and all of that. You get me now. So you can imagine if we have 10, 15, 20 production sets of our world, 30, 40 big concerts that these guys are doing by Nigerian promoters, not American promoters. Because what, what we see here now is that international promoters are taking our big stars out there and just paying them their fee. Mm. So what, 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 what Nigeria is most likely getting is that small part of that is fee they're sending back home to go buy house from Ivoleki. You get, but the main, the 90% of the humongous revenues are being made by. So we need Nigerian promoters to go out there, promote Nigerian concerts. Do you get me now? And it's, or bring back those Nigerian giants in here you get to make those big concerts so that people can be coming in. Okay. Are you seeing me now? So that's, that's, those are the two main reasons why we're, we're taking our way to the UK. Okay. Okay, uh, we've been talking with uh, Joseph Edgar. Um, he is the, do I call it CEO? No, not CEO. What do I call it? I'm a spiritual leader. <laughs> <laughs> CEO well, is a, he runs Duke of Swallow uh, Productions, mm -hmm. and we're glad to have had you on the program today. Thank you. Good luck with your five, five Yeah. Uh, when home. are you staging it? 5th of November. Okay. At Jimmy Sata Hall. Good luck. So, what we've been talking about here is the power of telling our own stories, and uh, he has been telling stories, and we're encouraging you, whatever you do, to be the ambassador of Nigeria and tell our stories the way they should be told. We'll just take a short break and when we return, we'll talk tech a little bit. Stay with us. <laughs>